Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon all of you. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina wa man yahdihillahu falamu billala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Summa amma ba'd. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-majid ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Wa aydan yaqulu Allah ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Respected brothers and sisters, um, today I would like to begin by quoting to you or the translation of the ayah that I just mentioned, and that is the ayah that reads: "O oh humanity, يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم." What is it that has deceived you? from your generous Lord, Rabbika al-Kareem. What is it that has deceived you from your generous Lord? This verse causes us to ponder and reflect, and I want to offer a few thoughts to you um, that came to me as I reflected on this verse. I asked myself, what is it that has deceived me? about the kindness and the generosity and the mercy of God? What is it that blinds us from seeing his beauty, from knowing and admiring him? What narrows the heart and mind so it can no longer appreciate the bright rays of his glorious light? Maybe or perhaps I could ask, is it the ugliness of this world, the fear and anxiety around us, the stream of mass shootings that we see over and over again? Is this what makes the light in our hearts grow dim and it become harder to see that generosity? Or is it because our mind just strains to find meaning in all this chaos? We can't make sense of it. Or is it the plight of our homelands or the fact if we come from immigrant backgrounds, or if our parents do, these homelands that we see decimated, bombarded by a soulless imperial machine that always and consistently values profit over human life, something which goes beyond just the imperial nature of states and countries, but also the way our businesses and organizations now operate with this logic of profit over and more valued than human life. Perhaps it is these things that makes it hard for our hearts to be in tuned and attuned to Allah's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity. Maybe it's the generational trauma and grief of seeing people that look like you be consistently sidelined and marginalized from enjoying the spoils of this American project. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, Ya ayyuhal insanu, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. O humanity, what is it? What is it exactly that cuts you off from your generous Lord? Maybe it's something in our personal past. Maybe we did not experience the generosity and kindness from those that we yearn from it the most, whether it's close and intimate relationships, people that have uh, we've looked to and longed for their love but haven't received it. Or maybe it's because we just didn't hear how beautiful you are. Or maybe you heard it, but just not enough. Ya ayyuhal insanu. Oh humanity, what is it that deceives you from your generous Lord? The next verse reads, 
خلقك فسواك فعدلا The one that created you Who is this generous Lord? Allah is saying the one that made you فسواك and molded you molded you the miracle of being born and the miracle of being shaped in the womb of our mothers in the ways that Allah wills and he gave you proportion and symmetry he gave you proportion and symmetry we have two ears two eyes two eyebrows where are all of these patterns coming from or if you look down upon your hands you'll notice these lines that hopefully you can see through this zoom meeting right and then you have the opposite on the other hand all of this symmetry that you have or you have your fingerprints to look at which are unique for each person and used as an identification for your person in particular and even that we can see as a sign of god's uniqueness allah's uniqueness this is the generosity of your lord alladhi khalaqaka the one that made you fasawaka and molded you and gave you proportion and symmetry fi ayi suratim ma sha rakkabak in in whichever form he willed and he chose and he specified in particular for you to be this way and put you together that way in particular what are these verses calling us to first allah asks us what is it that deceives you from from my generosity then he goes on to remind us that he made us he shaped us he invested in the way that we he's invested and in, vested in the way that he made us and he, it was all on purpose one of the things that's happening is that he's inviting us back to remember and marvel at our own creation as a means of closing this gap as as a means of closing that deceptive sense that comes into our hearts just from living this life he's reminding us that we did not have to exist at all and in fact there was a time when even our parents didn't know who we were the name ariz for example which is my name did not ring any kind of meaning in my mother's heart and then all of a sudden i became so special and important to her but there was a time that i wasn't and none of us were but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us in particular and made us and that is a huge act of generosity that words can't really capture and when he says that he molded us in whatever way he willed we can see that as a reminder that you in particular with all your physical and emotional and spiritual qualities with all your features your quirks your idiosyncrasies was it was and is on purpose it is on purpose and you are on purpose as a human being you are on purpose and in all of this god made you beautiful ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika karim oh humanity what is it that deceives you about your generous lord or in regard to your generous lord this point about coming back and noting our creation the point i want to come to with this is that when we feel this constriction in our hearts when we look at the tragedies around us or other means that become kind of blockades to us realizing the mercy of god that we are called to attune ourselves to the beauty of ourselves the beauty of our creation and the beauty of that relationship between us as created beings made on purpose by a powerful will that knows us and wants us to be this point on beauty is what i'd like to center on as i close up this first khutbah this ability to attune our hearts to the beauty around us is a doorway to appreciating god it is a doorway especially to trusting in god no matter the calamity that comes to us no matter the calamity that visits us and in relation to this theme of beauty we know or may have heard of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in allah jamilun yuhibbul jamala indeed god loves beauty 
he loves, uh, indeed, sorry, indeed, God is beautiful and he loves beauty or he loves beauty. Indeed, God is beautiful. He loves beauty. So what I'd like to leave you with is how is it that we as people can create beauty in our lives? And how can us being attuned to the beauty in our life become a doorway to gratitude? So these are the questions that I'd like you to reflect on for this Juma, inshallah. How can I make my life more beautiful? What does it mean for my relationships to be beautiful? Whether it's my relationships with my parents, whether it's my relationship with my children or siblings, family members or friends, close friends, acquaintances, coworkers, what does it mean to be beautiful in relationship with others? What does that mean? What does that look like? And trying to maybe note down a few things that you can try. Some of us may not have ideal relationships with some of our intimate, um, the intimate people in our lives, or let's say the, the relationships that God has chosen for us, like parents or even children. Some of those are some, sometimes these are some of the most challenging relationships in our lives. So I don't mean for you to take this um, point or this kind of call for you to reflect as let me try to make something ideal um, or make something into an ideal that isn't quite ideal right now. But if we are in some kind of tension with these intimate relationships, there may be smaller ways to be beautiful that don't feel as overwhelming. You know, whether it's reaching out um, despite the fact that someone hasn't reached out to us, simply to say, hello, how are you? Keeping it short, cutting it off to a point of comfort for us. Or whether you're fine with your, you know, having this conversation, but you know your parent appreciates a call, so you call them an extra time, for instance. Um, for our kids, it can just be being present. You know, how often is it that we're distracted by technology or by something that we're doing and all our kids, you know, our kids' behavior is really just a sign that they want to spend time with us. Maybe they just want to spend time with us in silence. Maybe we just need to sit down next to them while they're doing something and do something. Sitting down next to them, not necessarily, you know, engaging them, but at least letting them know that you're present, that you're around, that you care for them. And making that clear to them in the ways that you are with them when they speak with you, you know, turning your body towards them with full attention, looking at them, trying to let go of whatever distractions you have. These are some small things, but I know this is gonna be different from all of you. So how can we make those relationships beautiful? I wanna leave you all with this um, uh, short story before going into uh, the last khutbah or the second khutbah. Um, my wife shared this story with me and it really moved me and touched me. And I was really thinking about, you know, themes of beauty and trusting God, despite all of the ugliness that's around us. And when she shared with me was this picture that someone who had written a blog um, had shared a story about people in Syria. And in this instance, it was a neighborhood that had been bombarded and there was rubble everywhere. So you can just imagine like piles of stones and debris and such. But the picture depicted a group of children sitting on that debris, and in front of them was a puppet show being put on for them by these parents or community members. And she pointed that out to show, well, this picture image itself shows a kind of resiliency, you know, that sometimes in America, we're so afraid of the worst possible things where many places in the world have already experienced those things. We're, we're so afraid of the potential of it um, that we sometimes lose space or dims that light inside of us. But I, I lift this story up to show that there are ways in which uh, refusing almost to see the destruction around us or moving beyond that to say that we are still invested in what's here. We're still invested in our children. They still exist. The ones that are alive, alhamdulillah, we are gonna give them our all. We're gonna give them this beautiful puppet show lift their spirits up, let them know we care for them. And that's not something that any superpower, any war machine can take away from us. That is something 
beautiful that we can hold on to and we can create that beauty in our life. That's always an option for us wherever we are. So when we, this really was an inspiration for me because when, when we say this um, saying in the Quran, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, you know, that God is sufficient for us. He's all that we need and he's the best disposer of our fears. That this trusting in God is not always about always expecting good things to happen in our lives or in our society or in our environment, but rather it is to know that somewhere deep down inside we have to bring out those wells of beauty within us into this life where whatever we find ourselves in and that Allah is with us through it all. Um, I think I'll stop there. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إن الله هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Brothers and sisters, I'd like to transition to the second khutbah uh, as a reminder to where we are in the Muslim calendar. So we are in the month of Muharram. I believe today is the seventh of Muharram. What I did, did look up was that on Monday will be the 10th of Muharram, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And the 10th of Muharram, um, is commemorated on the one hand um, by some of us as the beginning of a new year. And as that time in sacred history when Prophet Musa السلام, was able to free Bani Israel from the grips of the Pharaoh. And the Prophet وسلم, there are narrations that encourage us to fast on the day of Ashura, which is uh, the name for the day uh, of the 10th of Muharram. It is also uh, a time where some of us may commemorate and perhaps mourn the tragedy of the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein, who's the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, who was massacred along uh, with many of his family members present, um, save a few of his female um, family members and children. And so this day is an important day in terms of what it reminds us of. And if we want to connect these two instances, that of Moses freeing the, Pharaoh, uh, the, the children of Israel from the grips of the Pharaoh and the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, there's this common thread of fighting and standing up to tyrannical forces, fighting and standing up to tyrannical forces. So in the story of Musa, it's obviously the Pharaoh. And in the story of Imam Hussein, it is the power structure of the Muslim, uh, you could say, Khilafat at that time. So in both of these instances, uh, while it's encouraged to fast, I'm going to simply add something simple without going into many details, uh, just for the sake of time around these important occasions. I encourage you to read about them, inshallah. But what I'd like to say is more practical that on the day of Ashura when we fast, let us think inshallah about what are ways that we interact with power? Power that um, is above us in, in terms of vertical power, whether it's relationships with our supervisors, the institutions that we are a part of, um, whether it's how we behave as citizens of, of a country that might not always be just, how do we perceive these relationships of power? How does, these, how does that power affect us? How much of our morality do we compromise as a result of being a part of certain institutions and structures? And what can we do to train ourselves to have the courage to say no to corrupt forms of power when it's necessary and healthy and important? And what are small ways an additional point of reflection if we're able to fast during our fast to, to take five minutes and also ask ourselves what are small ways that we can stand up for justice. This is not kind of a, a sidelined version of Islam, but it's the centerpiece of Islam that is often overlooked. 
And in fact, it's clear from the Quran, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, in the Allah Ya'muru, Ya'muru Bil Adli, that God commands you with justice, with establishing justice, with being fair. That's something that's so important to this tradition. So, what is it that we do to those below us in power to be fair, whether it's our employees, whether it's our children, or others that may not enjoy the same privileges as us? What are we doing with the power that we have, the wealth that we have? Because indeed, you know, beyond the bare minimum of the law or the way that the law might prescribe things, the Quran is very clear that on the day of judgment, you're going to be asked about what you had. You'll be asked about the blessings that you enjoyed. And I don't think that this will be a legal procedure, you know, or fiqhi procedure, but this is really going to come to the heart of what you knew you could have done and you didn't do. So I encourage you all to really take these things seriously, reflect, um, and uh, I hope uh, I hope this khutbah has been of benefit. Rabbana, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim anna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim anna ka hamidun majid. Rabbana, لا تزف قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أرينا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعا وأرينا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا استنابا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار والله أسي for good in this life and in the آخرة for all of us أسي to cure our hearts of the diseases that they may have, grant us the tawfiq to forgive each other, to have mercy on each other as a community, to have tolerance for each other's differences, to, to rise to the occasion of being a part of this blessed ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best of creation. I ask you to grant us mercy in our hearts, forgiveness in our hearts, to give healing and help us to have tawfiq to do justice to our relationships, but go further to have mercy in these relationships and to have ihsan in these relationships. And, and that you grant us the tawfiq, Ya Allah, to have trust in you because you know, only you know, Ya Allah, that this is, this is an ocean that's not easily exhausted and not something that can happen overnight. We ask you to grant us the ability to trust in you despite all of these undulations and these ups and downs of life. Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Amin. Summa amin. Inna Allah ya amuru bil adli wal ihsani wa itai bil qurba wa yanha anil fashai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Jazakallah khair.